Our attention will shift to the Darestock feature event. 15 laps is the distance, and here's Wally with the starting lineup. Right you are, Ben. Kicking it off will be the number 10 machine for John Hurley of Tallinn, Connecticut. Outside of him will be the number 12 car, the BBA Technology Special from Wallingford, Connecticut for Jimmy Sullivan. On the inside of the second row, Tony Bartley of Summers in the rental race car number 66. Outside row number two, driving car number 64, the H&B siding sponsored car from Stafford Springs, Connecticut for Michael Bennett. Inside the third row from Milford, Connecticut aboard the Potter Racing Monte Carlo, it's Jeff Potter, number 42. Then we go to the number 96 out of Enfield, Connecticut, the Loman uh, Blias Chevrolet Cadillac, uh, number 96, for Timmy Kluntz. Then we have the number 13 machine of Scott Hitchcock of Ashford, Connecticut, aboard the Fraser Post and Beam entry. Car number 39 is up next. That's the Bill Dubes Heating and Cooling sponsored car from Meriden, Connecticut, for Paul Varaccio. We move next to the number 23 for Kevin Gambacorda of Ellington and the Maverick Group Regal. Back in the 11th starting spot, it is car number 54 out of Springfield, Massachusetts. The Beverly Hills uh, Bookie.com machine, and that's Fran Siana. Then we go to the number 8 car from Plainville, Connecticut. It's the Eschenbrenner Racing Team machine for Dennis Eschenbrenner. Big Kahuna Racing brings us car number 28 for a very talented female driver from Manchester, Connecticut for Danielle Botticello. The Lafron Boy Well Drilling Regal is next, the number 17 from Woodstock Valley, Connecticut. Gwen Gomo. Right Image Signs brings us car number 32 out of Ellington, Connecticut for Vince Gambacarta. And then we go to the 27, Anthony Santangelo of Cromwell, Connecticut, behind the wheel. Renta Race Cars brings us car number 22 back in the 17th starting spot from Wallingford, Connecticut for Gary Spinato, Jr. Moving next to the number 9, it's the R&B painting, Stevenson Lumber. You can race too in a rental race car machine from Naugatuck, Connecticut. Utility transport machine from Plainville, Connecticut, the driver Paul Conti. Bellasalo Incorporated brings us car number 18, another car for the Big Kahuna Racing Group from Stafford Springs, Connecticut. It is Stacy Botticello. And based on his performance uh, last time out, it's the number three to be looked at, I guess. The East Windsor, Connecticut driver is aboard the Advanced Performance Class Regal. It's Bobby Leone. Bill Kaufman will be starting next out of East Windsor, Connecticut in the J. Mary Kaufman Racing Enterprises number 21. And there you have our field for the air feature. 15 laps is the distance. We'd remind you, if you haven't already done so, to make sure you check out the New England Dodge dealer's display behind the uh, small grandstand area. Coming off turn number four, take a look at all the excitement that surrounds the Dodge dealers as part of the presentation for this special event for Friday night competition here at Jackaroot Stafford Motor Speedway. I'm Ben Dodge, along with Raleigh Jacobs. We'll be covering the action broadcast side here. Our cohorts are, are checking out things in the paddock area. And the gentleman that will be covering the action down on Pitt Road is another part of our SMS broadcast team, Gary Danko. Gary, we look forward to tonight's presentation. Well, th well thank you, Ben. Uh, exactly right. We're going to uh, find out who, who can bring their car from the rear of the field and bring it up to the front. There's a lot of good competitors in this their their stock division. And uh, we'll just have to find out uh, who's going to come to victory lane here this evening. Ben? Well, down the back straightaway, the field is doubled up. They'll head into turn number three, past the CarQuest markings. Mustang GT Convertible, provided by Dylan Ford. If you're in the market for a new or used vehicle, see the experts. Tell them you heard about it right here at the Stafford Motor Speedway. Well, we're ready. It's showtime, Raleigh, off turn number four. John Hurley out of Tallinn, Connecticut, teamed up with the 12 car of Jimmy Sullivan. They work their way off turn number four. Looking for the start. There's the green. It's feature event time. Down into turn number one, great racing action. Little change in the lineup, the 64 car of Mike Bennett works its way in a second already, Raleigh. We've got a challenge off turn two. Ah, oh, yes, the bloodlines are there. The number 64, grandson of Herb Bennett, former competitor here. But keep an eye on Hurley. He's a tough competitor, and he's had a favorable start here. Off the turn he comes, leading the way to complete lap number one. Holding down the number three spot is the 42 of Jeff Potter. 
Hunter doing a fine job, starting to string it out just a bit. The green number 13, that's Scott Hitchcock out of Ashford, Connecticut. The Frazier Post and Beam sponsored car. It runs in the fourth spot. Meanwhile, the battle becomes a battle for position number five. The 74 holding off the opposition. The car with a lightning bolt down the side is the number 23 for Kevin Gambacorda. He's been very strong in the past, and he's looking very strong here tonight. Probably they're three wide off turn four. Absolutely, and keep an eye on the 32, Vince Gambacorda. He is very much in the mix, working to the inside now. Works under, oh, problems for Bennett as he drops off the pace. Tough break there. He was running so strong at the point, and that leaves car number 10 out in front for John Hurley all by himself. The black, gold, and red number 10 starts to literally pull away from the opposition. But look out, there's the battle for second. 42 machine for Jeff Potter out of Milford, Connecticut, doing a fine job of holding on for second. Hitchcock is right there with him with that number 13. Scott Hitchcock reels him in. Battle of two Buicks as they work their way down into turn number three. Hitchcock pulls it back in the line. The 42 car of Potter still holding on in the quest for second. Look a little further back in the field. They're slicing and dicing as they come off turn number four. Well, Hitchcock's been in this division for some time now, and he's certainly showing his experience as he works hard now on Potter in that number two spot. Meanwhile, back a little further, moving up nicely in the 32, Vince Gambacorda to take over the number four spot. Jeff Hubble doing a nice job with the uh, rental race cars, number 26. He has worked his way into the top five, and we have got a yellow. So the first caution of the event comes out. It looks like it was for the 12 car. It spun beneath the Diamond Vision screen. That's uh, the uh, Jim Sullivan car out of Wallingford, Connecticut. That's going to tighten it all back up as uh, the commanding lead of car number 10 for John Early out of Tallinn, Connecticut, going, going, gone. And such are the fates of racing, right, Ben? They sure yeah. are, and setting right Whew. there behind him is Jeff Potter out of Milford, Connecticut. The Potter Racing Enterprises, white and orange machine. That car is going to be very, very strong this season. Hitchcock uh, with the green, number 13. You know, there was a time in auto racing that green was considered unlucky, and the number 13 was also considered unlucky. Then uh, competitors came along with major sponsors, uh, and of course, everyone's favorite color of money is green, and green became lucky. And the number 13, we'll ask Teddy Christopher how lucky that number is. He'll tell you that it works for him being a three-time winner, as Kyle Ricky pointed out during Spring Sizzler weekend, literally dominating both of the SK Modified events and then winning the Featherlight Modified Series event. But right now, our attention will shift down on Pitt Road to Gary Danko. Well, Michael Bennett, the driver of car number 64, the Paradiso Financial Entry, you're out. What happened to him? I don't know. We've been having motor problems all year. I just want to thank all the guys that have been working on the car really hard, I'm trying to get a good finish for him. We'll figure it out. I don't know. We'll just keep losing power. Just want to thank all my sponsors real quick. H&B Sign, Cash Green and Builders, Paraniso Financial, Randy's Trucking, uh, Photos Pro, Alcoa, Paint by Tony, Randy's Trucking, just everyone that's been helping Gary's repair, uh, Stafford Sand and Gravel, s and Carpentry, all you guys. I'm sorry. We're going to get one for you. We're going to get two, actually. Tough break for Michael Bennett as he's out of the event early. He sure is, and you have to give that youngster credit. He got all those sponsors in, and that's uh, very important if you want to go far in this business. Uh, you have to thank the people that put up the money that make the magic and make the difference. Speaking of magic, they come off turn number four. The lights are flashing. Those are provided by Whaling Engineering uh, that provides safety lighting for just about every type of emergency and specialty vehicle that you can imagine. The Ford is the... Uh, Mustang GT provided by Dylan Ford out of Manchester, Connecticut. Take note of it when it comes down the front straightaway area. If you look to the left rear taillight of the car, you'll see literally one of the cameras that is mounted there that gives you an incredible shot of uh, exactly what the cars look like when they're in that front row anticipating going for a start as they're paired off in rows of two heading down the back straightaway. Now, if you'd like to get involved in... Uh, Racing here at the Stafford Motor Speedway, the Dare Stock Division is the ideal division to get started in. We've seen tremendous talent like Woody Pitcat, uh, Rick Lanigan, and several others come up through the ranks out of this division. And uh, these are the stars of tomorrow. So uh, get going, get involved, and be a part of the success here at Stafford. Let's go now for a quick report. Chris Spinato Jr. is out of the event with car number 22. Uh, he was dumping fluid. And also out of the event is uh, the Kaufman machine. Uh, Bill, what happened? Uh, we knew we had a problem before we started. It had a little oil leak. Thought we had it taken care of, but uh, I guess we didn't. So we'll be back next week. 
A break for Bill Kaufman and Gary Spinato Jr. back upstairs. Green flag is out and the 10 picks up where it left off. John Hurley out of Tallinn, Connecticut sets the pace at the point. Battle is a battle for the third spot now as car number 26, Jeff Hubble. What an outstanding job he did. He's come from 19th starting spot, Raleigh, worked his way among the top three cars. Hitchcock in the green number 13 sets in second as they come off turn number four. Well done indeed, and moving up very smartly to the 27 of Tony Sanangelo to take the number four spot away from Jeff Potter in the 42. Potter who ran right among the top three cars, looked very, very strong. Now we've got a problem as uh, We've got one car sideways and around. It is the 42 machine that uh, has the problem after running so strong. Car number 42 is Jeff Potter. Is Potter now forced to pick it up at the rear of the field? We're green and racing. And the black flag being waved to one of our entrants, the 32, driven by Vince Gambacorta. Meanwhile, now here's Hubble fighting to take that number two spot away from Hitchcock. Down the back stretch, side by side. Good what, action there. What a great run down into turn number three. The car that started 19. Second, and this young man is showing tremendous talent. Jeff Hubble out of Naugatuck, Connecticut, moves in, takes over the runner up spot. Seven of the 15 laps are into the record books. As they come off that second turn, down the back straightaway, one car getting the black flag. It is the 36 machine that is slightly off the pace, but at the front, it is still car number 10 for John Hurley out of Tallinn, Connecticut. And Hurley has done a nice job, Raleigh. He has uh, not really used up the race car. Nice and smooth and consistent, and he's maintained about the same margin over first and second for those first eight laps. But the final seven will determine who visits CarQuest Victory Lane. Absolutely. Meanwhile, uh, some smoke dropping from the backside of the 27 of San Angelo will keep an eye on that situation. He holds the number four position. San Angelo is closing up that gap, though, even though he's got a little bit of smoke there. But there is the black flag, and it apparently is for the 27 car. Yes, we can see the markings down in turn number one. Anthony Santangelo out of Cromwell, Connecticut, has been black flagged from the competition. Now, the once commanding lead held by car number 10 for John Hooley is suddenly gone. The number 20, oh, we've got a yellow around down the back straightaway. The 54 car is involved for Franciana. And the 96 of Tim Pluntz also sitting uh, idly right now, but now he, now he fires. And He'll be able to pull away. Laura Secor with the number 38 car was the third car involved in the altercation. Down at pit road, car number 27, which was black flagged. Anthony San Angelo uh, was uh, black flagged. A little smoke coming out of the right side of the race car. So uh, nine of the 15 laps are now complete in this Dare Stock event. As we mentioned before, a lot of work is going on in the Jimmy Bosco paddock area in preparation for tonight's event in all of the divisions of competition. And uh, last Friday evening, Mother Nature, of course, heavy rains came in and set in throughout the evening and everybody was anxious to begin with the first Friday night program of the 2003 season. But that did not get underway, so everybody's had a week more to do a little adjusting and uh, tinkering with the race cars to get them dialed in. But no one knows exactly what to expect tonight. And here at this half-mile facility, as the conditions in the element will change, so do the conditions on the racetrack. And what we mean by that is uh, tonight is predicted to be cool. The racing surface itself and the heat from the sun is going to change. It'll become a little bit different than it was during qualifying action here this afternoon. Yes. And the cars that are the most concerned about that situation are the Bush cars because those teams have had limited amounts of practice on the racetrack and uh, they have been here before in night conditions, but no one knows what to expect. There has not been a lot of uh, opportunity to put down a lot of rubber on the racetrack itself. And uh, that's where we're seeing a, a lot of work going on in the paddock area. So work still continues down the back straightaway area there as they uh, go to hitch up to the number 54 car. Let's go back down in pit road. Well, I'm uh, with Tony St. Angelo, the driver of car number 27th. He started back in the 14th position, worked his way up to uh, the fourth position. Uh, Tony, what happened? Uh, I don't know. I guess I have some kind of leak. Something was smoking and they uh, gave me the black flag. Were you surprised uh, that you moved up as quickly as you did? No, the car's been uh, running great, handling great. I'm, I was hoping to finish this race. 
Okay, tough break for Tony St. Angelo, the driver of car number 27. Ben? I think you're going to see that gentleman in victory lane very, very soon. He was very strong with that number 27 car. Started back in the 16th starting spot and worked his way among the top three here. Nine laps now show on the uh, scoreboard here at the Stafford Motor Speedway. Car number 66 also pulls back behind Pit Road, and that's... Uh, the Tony Bartley uh, car out of Summers, Connecticut, another one of the Renner race cars machine. And it looks like the field is under single file formation. We should be ready to get them fired back up in just a moment. Nine of the 15 are now complete. If you've just joined us, make sure you pick up the official Souvenir magazine for tonight's presentation, The Pit Stopper. It's got all the facts, figures, and statistics, and everything that you'll need to know about Jack Root Stafford Motor Speedway. We've got a lot of big supporters that are proud contingency donors to the racing action here at the Stafford Motor Speedway. And Raleigh will be uh, mentioning those great folks throughout this evening's program. CarQuest, the TechNet professional for auto service. You'll find it at CarQuest. Take the opportunity to take a look around the billboards in the back straightaway area here at the Stafford Motor Speedway. Remember, without their continued support, we couldn't put on the fine, impressive, short track competition you're used to seeing here at the Stafford Motor Speedway. So uh, set back, relax, and enjoy. The Dare Stock feature is about to go green in just a few moments as they head down the back straightaway. Lights are off on the safety vehicle, Raleigh, and that's an indication that we're moments away from the restart. Right you are, Ben. And at this point, John Hurley must be muttering to himself, here I've built up good leads twice, and the caution flag flies, and now I have next to me what appears to be the fastest car in this race, in the 26 of Jeff Hubble. Well, let's see how it's all handled. We have six laps to go, and it'll be a shootout, I think, between these top two, and don't count out Scott Hitchcock in the green number 13. John Hurley trying to hold on in the inside lane, but what a run in the outside groove by Jeff Hubble with the number 26 car. Forced to back out of it just a bit. He stands on the gas, and John Hurley puts the black and gold. Number 10 to the point. Meanwhile, the 26 right there reeling him in of Jeff Hubble. Hubble sets in second. They hold it nice and low. Coming off the fourth turn, back to the line. We've got car number nine crossed up. That is the Peter Bork machine. He gathers it back. The R&B painting-sponsored race car. He's moving into content among the top five cars here. Well, no doubt, too, the uh, cautions have certainly helped one of our competitors. Contact on the back stretch. Bork and Conti make contact. Somehow, Leone is able to scramble by, and he's got the number four spot. But we've got the caution flying again as Conti motors away under his own power. Well, he's okay. Well, the caution does come out. We're going to have to tighten it all back up. Once again, the overall distance will be 15 circuits. Don't count Bobby Leone out of this one, Ben. Oh, never. He's That's very, very three. strong. Yes, yep. he's very, very strong. Leone out of East Windsor, Connecticut, the Advanced Performance Glass Buick Regal. He's our correctional officer for the state of Connecticut, and, uh, well, he's going to put some handcuffs on somebody to work his way up, I think. He sure is, Raleigh. Lights are on on the safety vehicle as it heads down the back straight away. Don't forget, as we mentioned before, to tune in WCTX. Channel 9 on most cable systems for NASCAR New England. Yes, sir. Debut tomorrow night. Yes, Don't forget, sir. 6 o'clock will be the start of that show. WCTX from 6 to 7 p.m. for 20 consecutive weeks. Show produced by SMS Images and Teleproductions Company. You also, uh, we should mention and point out that during the course of these first few Friday night events, we're trying to work the television program and the public address system together and kind of combine both of it. So at times it might seem a little unusual to you. I'm sure it does. It seems a little unusual to me. <laughs> but uh, Kim Hart and myself are, are doing the broadcast for the television portion of the program. So what you'll hear is uh, you'll hear Raleigh Jacobson, Kyle Ricky come on to the main PA system, give the starting lineup. They will throw it to us. And what we'll be referring to is not necessarily everything you're seeing on the racetrack, but we, what we are seeing on the television monitors as well. So uh, bear with us a little bit. Uh, trust me, we're really not that bad. We're really pretty good. <laughs> you are. <laughs> so check it out and uh, make sure you uh, check it out. It's a great product. And I'll tell you, uh, we certainly hope that you'll be tuning in tomorrow night from 6 to 7 to see round number one, the first event of the greatest race in the history of spring. And right now, let's go down to Gary Danko. Gary? Well, thanks, Ben. I'm with uh, Fran Sienna, the driver of uh, car number 54. A lot of damage done to your car. First of all, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. 
how much damage you got a chance to uh, to look at the damage on your machine and uh, how much damage is there? <laughs> a lot. It's not pretty. Not pretty at all. It's BeverlyHillsBookie.com was running great. And uh, a couple of guys don't have enough laps under their belt and just got out of shape and put me in a wall. Tough break for Fran Sienna as he's out of the event. Back upstairs. Okay, Gary. Here we go now. The battle resumes between Early in the black number 10 and the 26 of Jeff Hubble. And Hitchcock now trying to fight off Bobby Leone in the black number three. He goes to the outside of Hitchcock. And this one is far from over, folks. Ten laps complete, five to go. As Early hits the line, now make it four to go. Well, there's no question about it. He's really applying the muscle in this one. Car number 26 backs out of it just a bit, and the number 10 of John Hurley starts to expand that lead. Leone now is putting the pressure on Hitchcock. That's the battle between the green number 13, hunted down by the number three car, the Earnhardt lookalike machine that sets right there on the back bumper of Hitchcock. And out of nowhere comes car number 18 for Stacy Botticello. <laughs> she is really turning up the wick just a bit tonight setting back in the fifth spot as they head down the back straightaway. Here's the Popsicle Sticks rally in less than two circuits. It's all going to be history in this Dare Stock feature event. It looks like Stacy has the fastest car in that red 18, but a great time is running out. Here she comes to the line, and the signal two to go. Meanwhile, Leone looks to the outside of Hitchcock now. Can't do anything there, but he continues to hold that outside groove. Meanwhile, Hubble does close the gap between him and the leader right now. And let's see if Hubble has a little something left. Here he comes, moving right in on the back bumper of the black number 10. Doing a fine job. He reels him in. They come off turn number four, work their way back to the line. The white flag is out. In less than one lap, it's all going to be history. Car number 10, John Hurley from Tolland, Connecticut, has been the dominant force so far. Watch out. Here comes Jeff Hubble. If it's going to happen, it'll probably take place down into turn number three. Down the back straightaway, deep into turn three. Hubble reels him in. Can he do it as they come off turn number four? Back to the stripe they come. The checkered flag is out, and the first Friday night dare stock feature will go to John Hurley out of Tallinn, Connecticut. All right, and second place to the 26 for Jeff Hubble. Third spot goes to the 13 of Scott Hitchcock. The Bobby will Leone. Round out the top four, and then Botticella will finish in position number five. So it's all history heading down to CarQuest Victory Lane. Gary Danko is down there to meet and greet our winner. Tony Sutton will be coming on and joining us here very shortly. He's also a part of our television team, along with Kim Hart and, of course, Matt Buckler. So All the right. first feature of the event of the night is now history. Coming up next, qualifying racing action for the late model division. Right you are. And let's remind all of you who are coming in to the grandstand area right about now that we have reserve seating for the uh, top row, the top row of the main grandstand, reserve seating for tonight's event. And of course, as familiar, the yellow chairback seats are for reserve ticket holders only. So please check your tickets, make sure you're in the proper spot, please. Uh, lots of cars still pulling into the parking lot. So uh, before the evening's over, we're gonna have ourselves a pretty tight house. So please make sure you're in the right place. We'd like to remind all you race fans that the month of May is Youth Organization Month. Any youngster aged 6 to 14 who belongs to a youth organization, such as Little League or the Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts, who wears his uniform to the racetrack, will be admitted free of charge when accompanied by an adult. Now don't forget that. May, Youth Organization Month, here at Jackaroot Stafford Motor Speedway. Ben mentioned about picking up your copy of the Pit Stopper magazine, which has all the information you'll need to catch you right up on what has transpired thus far this season, and also a preview of what's to come, as well as lots of action photographs. Well, pick up the Pit Stopper magazine also for your official ballot for Most Popular Driver Award. That's voted upon by you, the fans. So be sure and have your ballot. This is the only official way that you can enter in the contest for Most Popular Driver. Gary Danko moves alongside our winner now, and here's Gary. And he's just about ready to climb out of his machine, the driver of car number 10. Out of a, about a big round of applause for John Hurley, who takes down the first Friday night action in the Dare Stock division as he proudly displays that checkered flag. And John, I'll tell you, you certainly had a very strong race car. Talk about how strong this car was. Well, uh, the cam went back in the 
spring sizzler. So Norm from Precision took over and uh, did a really nice job for us. Gave us a really nice, powerful motor this week. I want to thank him and uh, Barnard Chassis for uh, the work they've done on it, making it handle real well. Uh, my sponsors, Anderson Automotive, my crew, my family, Scotty Hitchcock, uh, uh, Nation Auto, uh, or the uh, SK18, and all the help they've given us, Jimmy and the crew down there, Larry, just came down and adjusted my carburetor for me. How about uh, Jeff Hubble in the closing laps? He was starting to close in. Were you worried about him? Yeah, I didn't think I was gonna. I didn't think I was gonna do it. I've I've ran with him before, and um, he's a very clean driver, very good driver, and uh, he's beat me on several occasions. So I was doing everything I can to stay low, and I figured if he's gonna beat me, he's gonna have to take me on the outside. Were you worried about those uh, restarts? Yeah, I I thought to. You know, I thought that the laps were really long. It seemed like forever. I, by the time the lap, ninth lap came around, we went into a yellow. I thought it was like close to the end of the race, and it was like I had a long way to go. It's got to be a great feeling uh, early in the season to get into victory lane. It's great. This is our first race of the year. We're real happy with it. Okay, taking down the win, John Hurley, the driver of car number 10. Okay, Gary moves along now to Jeff Hubble to see what might be on his mind. Gary? And he, Raleigh, he was another driver that certainly had a very strong race car here this evening. And uh, closing laps, it looked like you may have had something for Hurley. Well, I gave it everything I had. The team gave me a great car. Rent a race car puts together a real good deal for me. But I gave it everything I had, and I just didn't have it for him. He, I took it in sideways a couple of times trying to get under him, but I couldn't do it. So he had it all together tonight. When those cautions uh, first came out, the couple of them that we had, did you think maybe I may have something for him? On the restarts, I thought maybe, but you know, we get into the turn and he had a handling on me. You know, we were about even on engine, but he was out handling me. Okay, great run for Jeff Hubble here tonight in the rental race car. All right, there we go. We move along now to Scott Hitchcock. He put up a heck of a battle trying to work his way, but just couldn't muscle enough power to do it. Scott, uh, talk about the year run here tonight with car number 13. Uh, you look pretty strong, and it looked like you may have had something for these two drivers that finished ahead of you. Uh, yeah, I would have had something for him if I had new tires. I was just shaking a card on. Actually, this is my first race, too, and uh, <clears throat> John had a bad spring sizzle. I also did. My training went, his motor went, so we're both really shaking our cars down, and if this is anything that come for the future, you should see us up every week. Were you trying to search on the racetrack where your car would handle the best yeah, I tried high and low. I tried everywhere. Um, I had the motor. I could push them down the straightaways, but I just couldn't get through the corners correctly. Um, I'd like to thank my new sponsor, Fraser Post and Beam. Um, Lindale Stand out in Coventry. If without these people, I wouldn't be racing. <clears throat> okay, uh, great run tonight for uh, Scott Hitchcock. He comes home here third tonight in the Dare Stock Division. But when it was all said and done, John Hurley picks up the win here tonight in the Dare Stock. Back upstairs. All right, Gary, thank you.